The extravagance of the Egyptian era echoes throughout history. Set on the banks of the Nile in Thebes, Karnak Temple is the epiphany of the power the Egyptians possessed. This place of worship shows the grip that religion held on civilization throughout the vast Egyptian empire. Over the last few centuries, archaeological knowledge of the temple has grown, bringing with it discoveries that have baffled experts. What secrets does this sacred place hold? Is it evidence of the long-running debate over the impact of extraterrestrial visitors? Welcome to Crunch! In today's video, let us explore what secrets archaeologists have divulged from the evidence they found inside the Temple of Karnak. As one of the largest religious temples in the world, the Karnak Temple Complex covers around 200 acres of temples, pillars, lakes and gardens. The religious complex measures nearly 1.5 kilometers by 800 meters. Its construction is believed to have started almost 4,000 years ago during the Middle Kingdom, continuing over more than two millennia through the New Kingdom. Referred to as the Vatican of Ancient Egypt, it has helped experts sketch the history of ancient Egypt. However, there are certain aspects of Karnak that have become breeding grounds for controversy. One of them is the series of sensational photos taken in the Amun-Ra temple in Karnak and published by the respected Arab newspaper al Sharq al awsat The photos were of the bas-reliefs of the ancient temple and clearly depicted a battle helicopter with a distinct rotor and tail unit. And the one to its right appeared to be something like the Star Wars land speeder, while other aircraft astonishingly resembled contemporary supersonic fighters. Dubbed the helicopter hieroglyphs, these hieroglyphs also match almost exactly with similar engravings discovered above the entrance of the Seti temple in Abydos. These carvings have been interpreted in pseudo-scientific circles as mysterious or out-of-place artifacts. Proponents of these ideas believe they depict impossibly modern 20th century or extraterrestrial technology, such as what appears to be either a helicopter or possibly a submarine, two planes or even a UFO, all of which obviously did not exist at the time the hieroglyphs were carved. Or did they? From this point of view, espoused by ancient astronaut theorists, these hieroglyphs are seen as proof of extraterrestrial contact in the past. Some of these ufologists claim that extraterrestrials were responsible for the construction of famed monuments, including the pyramids and Stonehenge, amongst others. While some have argued that the images circulating on the internet are fakes, they are in fact real. Egyptologists have, however, offered more rational explanations, including that of the superimposition of hieroglyphs during the reign of different pharaohs and erosion over time. Meanwhile, Brian Forrester has argued that the ancient site provides evidence of advanced technology. He has claimed that engineers have been unable to fathom how certain core drill holes found at the temple complex could have been made with the materials in use at the time. Others have pointed out that certain statues and features were so precise that they must have been created using a rotating cutting tool, in stark contrast to the apparent hand tools that were used in the construction of Karnak. Is it possible that the builders of this Vatican of ancient Egypt were witnesses to extraterrestrial activity and perhaps even aided in their construction efforts? Whether or not the celestial being played any role here, many pharaohs did contribute to erecting this magnificent piece of architecture. Karnak experienced a golden age during the latter stages of the second millennium BCE, but it was during the first millennium BCE that activity there got even more interesting. During this millennium, Egypt witnessed a series of invasions and a series of non-native Egyptian pharaohs from the Kushites and Libyans to the Persians and Macedonians. Nevertheless, Karnak's importance remained. Some stunning structures remain visible at the sanctuary, built by some notable non-Egyptian pharaohs. One of the most striking of these structures is the gigantic first pylon at the very main entrance. This is a towering, isolated column, the Kiosk of Taharka. Originally, this 19-meter-high column was part of a roof structure, but all that remains today is this one column. Tahaka was a pharaoh of the Kushite 25th dynasty, and his legacy remains visible to this day at Karnak. 
Right in the center of Karnak, the holiest of sites, is a granite bark shrine to the great god Amun. Several pharaohs have constructed a bark shrine there over the centuries as they aimed to closely associate themselves and their rule with Amun. But the granite bark shrine that endures to this day is associated with the Macedonian ruler King Philip Aradius III, half-brother of Alexander the Great. An even more remarkable fact is that just down the road at Luxor Temple, the central room of that temple is dedicated to Alexander the Great himself. The Macedonian legacy is clear to see. Karnak was not one temple dedicated to one god. There were several temples and shrines dedicated to several gods, including Ta, the creator god and patron of craftsmen, Onsu, the god of the moon, Mut, the sky goddess, and Montu, the god of war, as well as it being home to a priestly community. The largest precinct was dedicated to the creator god, Amun-Ra. Karnak is not among the better conserved ancient monuments in Egypt as it was seemingly plundered for stone. Nevertheless, excavations of the temple sanctuary have uncovered several curious architectural features. The temple complex is also played with foundation issues, and while repairs take place, new discoveries are made all the time. Amongst these is the red granite Hatshepsut obelisk. Known to be the tallest in Egypt, it was dedicated to Hatshepsut, the female pharaoh. Originally, this was one of a pair, but its twin was taken by the Roman Emperor Constantine and erected in Rome. Karnak's importance to ancient Egyptian rulers only grew over the centuries. Successive pharaohs would leave their mark on this sanctuary to Amun. They would order the construction of new monumental buildings, and they would improve the existing structures of their predecessors or even demolish them. It's likely to fit that several pharaohs from the legendary 18th dynasty left their indelible mark on Karnak. From the obelisks of Hatshepsut to the Akmenu Festival Hall of Thutmosis III to the surviving baby-faced statue of Tutankhamun near the center of the complex. But it would be the rulers of the following dynasty, the 19th, that left the most famous legacy at Karnak. The largest area of the complex is the Hypostar Hall, a roof supported by rows of pillars. Located within the precinct of Amun-Ra, it measures more than 54,000 square feet and consists of 134 huge sandstone columns, most of which are more than 32.8 feet and 108.3 feet in diameter. Some attribute the central colonnade of 12 open papyrus columns to an 18th century dynasty pharaoh Amenhotep III, but the construction of the rest of the hall is attributed to Seti I, the second pharaoh of the 19th dynasty. Seti's Hypostar Hall is the pharaoh's greatest legacy at Karnak today but he also used the site as a place where he could promote his military achievements. From early in his reign, Seti campaigned with the army outside of Egypt, keen to secure his rule through military successes in ancient Libya and Syria. On the northern exterior wall of the Hypostal Hall, there are various martial depictions of Seti and his army on campaign. Seti I's martial and architectural achievements are being promoted throughout central Karnak. His successor, Ramesses II, was sure to follow suit. Like his father, Ramesses II also promoted his military successes on the hall's exterior southern wall. Looking at the facade reliefs, the battle is portrayed as an Egyptian victory, but in reality, the clash was much more of a stalemate. Most interesting of all, however, is a series of hieroglyphs written near one corner of this exterior wall. Easy to overlook today, this writing is the text of a peace treaty with the Hittites that followed the Battle of Kadesh, the first recorded peace treaty in history. This giant complex of Karnak, the most selected of places by the ancient Egyptians, fascinates its visitors even today. This is a wrap for the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching Crunch. Subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video.